Hey there everybody, Henry here, how's it going? I'm gonna be going over the ARDMS Pediatric Registry Review. I'm gonna be doing 10 videos with 10 questions each as opposed to the other reviews that I did that were four videos, 25 questions each. That will uh, add up to 100. Um, 10 times 10 is 100, right? I think so. So all right, let's get to it. Uh, question one, number one. The renal hilum does not contain a, the renal artery, B, renal vein, C, ureter, or D, medullary pyramid? The answer is D, medullary pyramid. As you can see here, we have the, the renal vein, the renal artery, the nerve, and the ureter going into the, the renal hilum right there. So next question. Two. What level of the conus medullaris is considered abnormal? A, L1 to L2, B, L2, C, above L3, or D, below L3? The answer is D, below L3. As you can see here, the, the conus med medullaris usually ends at L2 with L3 and lower being considered low-lying or tethered cord. Number three, the muscle anteromedial to the hip capsule is A, iliacus, B, vastus lateralis, C, iliopsoas, or D, vastus medialis? The answer is C, iliopsoas. Here you can see the joint capsule right here, or the hip capsule with the femoral neck. And here's the iliopsoas muscle. Four, the uterine artery is a branch of the A, external iliac artery, B, internal iliac artery, C, femoral artery, or D, inferior mesenteric artery. The answer is B, internal iliac artery. So here you have the aorta going into the bifurcation of the common iliac arteries bilaterally. Then that bifurcates into internal and external iliac artery. And then off of the internal iliac artery, you can see the uterine artery right here. Number five, the acetabulum should cover at least blank percent of the femoral head. A, 20%, B, 30%, C, 40%, or D, 50%? The answer is D, 50%. Here you have the ilium and the acetabulum, and you can see it's covering more than 50% of the femoral head. Number six, what pathology is shown here in a patient with a palpable olive sign? A, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, B, gastritis, C, duodenal ulcer, or D, helicobacter pylori? The answer is A, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. What would be an abnormal thickness measurement for the hypertrophic pyloric stenosis? A, greater than three millimeters, B, less than three millimeters, C, two millimeters, or D, one millimeter? The answer is A, greater than three millimeters. Number eight, what would be the cause of these findings? A, prune belly syndrome. B, diaphragmatic hernia. C, ectopia cordis. Or D, situs inversus. The answer is B, diaphragmatic hernia. Here, this is the chest, and you can see you have liver surrounded by pleural fluid. So this is, the diaphragm would be around right here. So this is a case of a very severe diaphragmatic hernia. Number nine, what pathology is present in this image? A, hydrocopus, B, hematocopus, C, hematometrocopus, or D, imperfect hymen? The answer is, the answer is B, hematometrocopus. Here you can see the bladder 
This is the vaginal canal filled with echogenic fluid. And here you can see there's also fluid within the endometrial cavity. So that would be hematometroculpus. And the echogenic fluid suggests blood. Number 10, where do you typically find this pathology? A, vas deferens, B, epididymis, C, retroperitoneum, or D, pampiniform plexus? The answer is D, pampiniform plexus. That is a varicose seal. You can see the testicle with the epididymis and the pampiniform plexus is this network of blood vessels that goes from the testicle into the inguinal canal following the spermatic cord. Here you can see the dilated veins in grayscale. In a patient with varicose seal, you can increase the blood flow, color Doppler, and pulse wave Doppler by having the patient do a valsalva maneuver. Stay tuned for the next 10 questions.